This is an intro to using 9Front on a Raspberry Pi. In this case here, I'm running on a Raspberry Pi 3B. There are two main SD card images for the Raspberry Pi, a Legacy Plan 9, mostly maintained by Richard Miller, and a 9Front one. Both the images boot you into a standalone single user terminal, running a file system off a of partition on the SD card. Richard Miller's Plan 9 is a little bit more complete. He has Wi-Fi, but not Bluetooth, and I know his I2C is working because I have borrowed its source code to add I2C to the 9Front 64-bit ARM kernel for my own projects. 9Front, uh, by comparison, is a little more bare bones when it comes to what you get on the SD card image. No Wi-Fi, I2C, or SPI. It does have basic GPIO, uh, and neither of them have working audio. It is possible to use a USB audio device, but you have to be picky with which ones because the USB interface on Pis is not the best quality. I've heard things are better with the Pi 4, but global chip shortage and all, I haven't had a chance to try one. Raspberry Pis have a reputation for chewing up SD cards, and SD cards are not hard drives. Many op other operating systems will quickly grind the SD card up using uh, logs and caching. But if you already have a Plan 9 file server running, you can basically just use the SD card for read-only to load the configuration needed to run everything off the server. This makes the Raspberry Pi a great option for a traditional diskless Plan 9 terminal. Before you can run your Raspberry Pi off your file server, you have to make sure the file server has binaries for the ARM CPU that the Pi uses. This is assuming you downloaded and installed a AMD 64 ISO for modern Intel or AMD CPU. The procedure is pretty painless and should take only a couple minutes to cross compile all the included system programs. So you change directory to slash sys slash source. And you can see that there's a make file here. In plan nine, they shortened it to MK instead of MAKE. You then set the object type variable to arm or ARM64, depending on whether you want 32-bit or 64-bit binaries. And after you've set that environmental variable that the make program looks for, you type mk install. And that will go and recompile all the system software to the 32-bit or 64-bit ARM. Uh, when you're done, you can run make clean to clean everything up. All right, I booted up the Raspberry Pi with a nine front image. And uh, you can see here that the, it does come with the partitions for a regular plan nine file system. Uh, I've already modified the boot options for this one to run off the demo file server rather than the SD card. And I'll log in as Glenda, which is the host of the file system. And that will allow me to make changes to some of the configuration files stored there. All right, the first thing to note when using 9Front on a Pi is a slight change on how you access the boot partitions. So rather than 9FS 9FAT, it's 9FS Pi DOS. And that gets mounted and slash in like normal. So you can see it's called Pi DOS here. Um, the other difference is how the Pi itself handles booting the operating system. It has its own firmware that needs specific files and it also needs them formatted in a specific way. Uh, the first is config.txt. And this specifies the kernel to load. It also has some options you can find in the documentation from the Raspberry Pi website. Like uh, I added the uh, HDMI options here so it would play nice with my video capture device. And the other is command line. And this basically does the other stuff that the plan9.ini file would do. It does have a very important quirk in that it, it all must be on a single line with absolutely no new line or carriage return and line feed. Um, the firmware on it breaks everything down by just a white space. And so 
As you can see here, I had to put quotes around this so it didn't interpret it as two separate commands. But I've already put in my file system and auth server in here. Uh, but overall, it's pretty simple. Um, so if you want to play with a, your Raspberry Pi on your Plan 9 network, you just need to load up the stock SD card image, then edit this file and have it run your file on auth server. And uh, if you mess it up, it, it's still a fat partition and the SD card can be read on Windows or Linux machines. Um, so you can fix it there if you need to. Another Pi quirk is instead of a uh, built-in Ethernet controller, um, what it has is one attached to the USB. And Ninefront does distinguish this as Ether U0 rather than Ether0 as seen in most of the documentation for networking on regular PCs. So you can see here, Ether uppercase U0. And there's the MAC address for the thing in here. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that because I'll need it later. So I'm going to use that MAC address to make an entry for this Pi in the network database file. And what this will let me do is if once the um, once your computer has a name, you can add custom configurations just for that particular system. We'll call this demo pi. Let's see here, we'll call it and all this stuff is the same. All right, but to save and there we go. So now that we have that in there, we can address some of the other interesting little quirks of the Pi here. One of them is that it does come with the GPIO pins and you can check the kernel to see if it has them. Whoops. And you can see the hash uppercase G GPIO. However, if we check in the device directory, they're not there. So the reason is, is because a regular computer either doesn't have GPIO or doesn't have ones that you're supposed to be playing with. So plan nine doesn't mount GPIO pins by default. So we will have to manually do that, or we can set up a startup script that will do that for us. All right, and I reboot it to see if it take effect and forgot I had to do one little more configuration, went back to the command line.txt in the PyDOS partition and add the stuff to set the static IP. But as you can see, the system now has a name. So now that it has a name, we can give it some personalized configuration files. And to do that, we go to the config directory at slash CFG. And what you do is you make a directory for the name of the system. And then you add a file called termrc. 
So the master term RC script does a bunch of the basic setup and then checks for a directory in here with the name of the system running term RC. And if it's running a CPU server, it'll look for one called CPU RC. And this way you can sort of add stuff to the master term RC file for terminals. And since this is going to be a script, we have to add the shebang here. So here we'll take care of two of the Pi shortcomings. One is we'll run aux timesync dash f. Since the Pi doesn't have a built-in clock with a battery, it always loses track of time every time you reboot it. And what this will do is when you boot the system, it'll automatically go to the file server, that's what the dash f does, and get the time from it. And the other thing we can do is add the pi's gpio pins to the device directory. And then also got to remember to set that as executable. Oops. Plus executable. There we go. So now we will reboot the system to see if that worked. And this time I'll log in as the regular user. And there we go. Now the clock is showing the current time. And there's GPIO listed in the device directory. And there's all the pins. I will say from my own experience, it is far easier to hack in Miller's I2C code to add a dedicated I2C device than it is to try to manipulate the I2C code uh, pins right here. Uh, Wi-Fi is another matter. One of the reasons Ninefront forked from the legacy code base was to add things like Wi-Fi and they have their own system. And Miller wrote up a Wi-Fi system just for the Pi and they aren't compatible. But if your Pi lacks some hardware, as I demonstrated in a recent video, you can always borrow the hardware from a CPU server. And in this case, I just mounted another computer sound card into the Pi's namespace so I can play music. And that should be enough to add a Pi to your Plan 9 network and get it running as smoothly as you can and uh, start messing with it. So until then, have fun.